Today, let's build a local first real time app that works across web and mobile applications. We can do this by utilizing open source tools like Expo and Legend State. Now, if you're unfamiliar, local first architecture is, you know, kind of the idea of having this snappy local experience. So even if you don't have any network on your mobile, you know, if the network drops or whatever, you should be able to interact with the app, load it up, um, create new items. And, you know, later when the network reestablishes, uh, then the items should be synced to, you know, your database, for example. And so luckily that is something we can do quite nicely with legend state. So legend state is a super fast all in one state and sync library that yet lets you write less code and make faster apps. And that sounds pretty great. So we have a react state library, so we can use it with react native and kind of fine grained reactivity for minimal render. So it just means it's, it's uh, super fast and then powerful sync and persistence and now with Superbase support built in. So that is really great. And it works with Expo and React Native via React Native Async Storage. So there is this legend state Superbase example, which is exactly what we're looking at today. And you can even use um, the Create Expo app with the example with legend state Superbase. Um, if you wanna just, you know, create the, the same example um, obviously, you can also just fork it from uh, GitHub if you want to do that. And then also we have this tutorial here, which really just goes in detail. Um, you know, what is legend state local first architecture? How does it work? And then first of all, you know, setting up the project. Again, we can use create expo app and install the dependencies. But let's have a look at the demo real quick. So this is what we want to build here. So, you know, simple to do app. So we want to build a local first expo app and we want to sync to Superbase. We want to make it work on mobile. And then, you know, obviously we want to, um, uh, this should say persist to Superbase and then we want to sync in real time. Okay, so, and as you can see, we've done um, this year, we built a local first expo app um, it is syncing to our Superbase database. Uh, it is working on mobile here as well, so we can interact with it here. And then as you can see, it is syncing across clients here in real time. And then lastly, we need to record the video tutorial. And you know, we pretty much got that done as well. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so let's jump into the code. So our application is running here. The nice thing is it works with um, Expo Go as well. And uh, we can have a look at kind of how this is set up. So let's dive into maybe the Superbase kind of um, schema setup. So first of all, if we want to, you know, set up a new Superbase project, what do we need to do? We need to go to database.new and we need to uh, choose our organization. We need to give it a project. So we'll say Super Legend Expo Real Time. Lot that's in here. We can generate a password. If you do that, just make sure you copy the password and you save it um, in a secure place, and then create a new project. So while that is happening, what we can do is we can, um, you know, from our dot env dot local example, we can create a new dot env dot local file. So we can just say copy dot env dot local example into dot env dot local. And then when that happens, you get a copy of the dot env dot local file. Um, one thing I like to do as we just generated the password here, um, I just store my database password in the dot env dot local, you can see it is git ignored here. And then as this is project is spinning up, um, you can see already we get our project credentials. So we can copy here the um, project URL here, uh, copy that, and then we can copy the anon public key here and give that a save. 
And so what we can do is, um, you know, our migration here. So we have this set up where we are kind of generating a random um, UUID as the primary key. We also just have a counter, um, which is basically just counting up the number of, you know, items in, in our database, for example. Here, the user ID we have um, commented out. So this is something if we want to later on add Superbase auth and, you know, RLS and really kind of scope the data to the user, we can very easily make that work as well by just adding uh, a user ID field here and then um, adding kind of RLS policies. So that is currently commented out. Then we need to enable Superbase real time. Um, and so this here is a function that is specifically for the usage with legend state. So we can use this as a trigger, you know, anytime there's inserted or updated actions on our items, we're tracking the times. And so this is what we're doing to be able to um, kind of use these, uh, you know, only sync kind of the last diff state. So using the timestamps, legend state can then sync only kind of the necessary differences that happened sort of since then. And so that kind of makes the, the inner dynamics work. And so we're basically just creating this trigger um, and running that before every insert uh, or update on our to do's table. Okay, fantastic. And so that is what we need to do. And so now lastly, what we need to do is we need to um, link our project. So when we're using the Superbase CLI, you know, obviously we could copy and paste this um, into the dashboard as well. So we could go to the SQL editor. Um, we could just copy and paste this here, but maybe we'll do the step where we say Superbase link, um, and then we can say our, so you can run actually Superbase link um, just on its own here. Now um, I have a lot of projects in there. So I think we can use a filter and we can filter for our legend um, real time, I believe there we are. And then we can select that. And so here we need our um, database password. Luckily we stored it here so we can put that in. And now we're linked up. And so what we can say now is superbase db push. And so this will apply our um, init migration, our SQL migration. We want to track that as well. And we push that up. And so now what we can see is when we go to the table editor here, we can see that we have our to do's table. Um, RLS is currently disabled um, because we don't have that yet, but we can see that real time is on on our table. And so that is great indeed. And then basically, dot um, dot local. So we have our new credentials put in. So these are our supervised project credentials. And we can now start up our app here. And then open it in the iOS simulator. Um, we might need to refresh it here to be connected. Okay, there we are. And so now we can say test. And so as this is inserted here, when we refresh, um, we can see this is coming in here. And also if we're now saying admin updated, um, you can see that the real time connection will then, um, you know, sync the the update to here, we can also say there is kind of these soft deletes. So if we say, um, deleted true, then it'll be removed uh, from there. Or, um, you know, again, done question mark. And um, if we, you know, refresh here, we will get done and we can say done um, true, and then it'll update in real time. There we are. Um, fantastic. And here the same thing as well, we, we might need to refresh this, you can see done. And if we update it here, it goes to Superbase and then in real time is synced between our states. Okay, fantastic. So the setup is working as intended. So let's have a look at the code. So the magic happens here in this Ugilds, um super legend file. So we have a Superbase client, we have our database types. So these are auto generated um, through the Superbase CLI. You can see it in the readme. This is how we're generating our um, TypeScript types and then writing them in here. And so there's a couple things from the legend state um, that we need. So we need our observable 
we need um, synced Superbase. So that's kind of a pre-configured um, synced Superbase um, plugin. Uh, we also need the uh, UUID v4. Um, so we need to be able to generate UUIDs locally because, you know, when we're creating a new item locally, we're basically inserting it into the local database first before syncing it to um, Superbase. So we need to make sure that, you know, even, um, you know, we have kind of this primary key that we can track even if it's created locally on our device. And then we're basically just... Um, configuring our custom synced um, plugin here, and we're using the uh, configure synced superbase, so that's giving us kind of some predefined option um, of the synced superbase. So these are kind of the, the options that we're passing in here, and then we're also preserving persisting here. So this is our persist plugin using the async storage within uh, React Native. So we we need to load that in from. Uh, React Native async storage. Um, and then we need to pass in our generate ID function. So that's generating our UUIDs. We need to pass in our Superbase client. And this is really, really cool here because we've created the Superbase client with um, our database types. This then means that our um, observables here that we create are also typed. So you can see the types are here um, piped through. So we have the types available. Um, to work with, so full end-to-end -end type safety. Um, this is our changes since our last sync, so that's where we're using the handle times method um, to have the timestamps in the database, and then we're just tracking the field created at, um, field updated at, so um, legend state knows what to use for syncing, and then we can optionally enable soft deletes, so we can use the field deleted um, here, deleted uh, field, which is our Boolean uh, and then what we can do is we can use this custom synced um, observable to specifically get kind of our to-dos um, observable. So this is from our to-dos collection. And then here we're basically just write a select. So if you're familiar with Superbase JS, this is very much um, this here. You get our Superbase client, and then we're just saying from um, our here to-dos table uh, in this case. We're selecting the ID, the counter, the text, the done, the created, add, updated, add, and deleted. So if we want to make all these create, update, um, delete functions work, we will also need to get access to these created, updated, and deleted at columns. So we need to put them here in the select. Then we're enabling real-time true, and that is pretty much all we need to enable the real-time syncing um, as things change. That really, really is super neat. Um, we're then enabling the persistence um, for the to-dos. And we also say we want to retry the syncing. Uh, and then we are specifying a retry option to be infinite. So even if you know our network drops off, we then retry changes with exponential back off, which is really neat to have built in. And then lastly, we just have a method to add our to-dos. So the way this works is we're generating our ID and then basically in our to-do observable, we're just inserting the new to-do with that ID and we're assigning the ID and the text and um, the rest of the items when it's inserted are then generated in the database. We um, had some default specifiers there. If you remember in our init migration, um, you see we have some default definitions here. Um, and that is pretty much all we need. And then for our toggle done, this is also super neat. So by just passing in the ID um, that we get uh, from kind of the click handler, we can then say to do with the ID. And again, because we have the end-to-end -end types here, so our done, we know um, that our to do's ID has it done, and then we can set that. And it's really neat, we get a previous method here. So what we can just do is we just take the previous one, and since we're toggling it, we're just turning that around, negating it, and then, you know, we're, we get toggle implemented really nicely. So that is really nice and easy to use. So these are really kind of, this is all our setup we need for legend state. And then when we go to our app, um, you can see, 
we're basically just um, we need to import here the observer for um, the react state observer basically we need some you know this is just kind of some setup for our react native and then basically we're just getting our to do um, we're just importing here our to do's as kind of an underscore to do so that's our observable so we can pipe it in um, this is just kind of a naming thing because later on if we look down here we have um, yeah to do so basically the name so otherwise it would be kind of a naming clash um, and so uh, we're piping in the types here and so the way this works with the the observer is basically that um, we want to observe changes that are happening um, with our observable here and then we have our to do's in here and then we're just passing this to kind of a, a render method so this is kind of just how the flat list works in react native so we're just passing in all our values of um, our to do um, collection here and then we're passing in kind of how we want to render this and some styles uh, and that is pretty much it and then we have a new to do as well so the new to do basically just has this um, add to do method and we're just passing in the text and then lastly our click handler so here um, this is our handle press and now our handle press is basically just toggled on to do id and yeah that is pretty much how this works um, so again also we have the deleted state synced so if we actually delete kind of all the rows um, within there that syncs as well and so yeah pretty neat um, with not much work we have um, implemented kind of a real-time sync a local first application and it works across web and mobile and so I'd say that is pretty neat and now record the video that's it as well so that's done fantastic lovely can't wait to see what you built and see you next time bye bye